Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. In whom you also trusted. After that you add the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also after you have believed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. When we say something is sealed, it means it is irrevocable. Last week, Tuesday, we were looking at overcoming sin. And I dwelt so much on the fact that <laughs> nobody can overcome sin on his own. Sunday, two weeks back, we started looking at why we need help from God. And we highlighted different areas in which man may need God. In whatever area that you need God. God will respond himself back in the name of Jesus. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of you. If you consider a baby that is just born, so much assistance and attention is needed for the baby to develop. Man also need help to become the son of God. I don't know if you have come to that realization. Sometimes you really want to do good things. You really want to do what is right. In fact, doing bad is not what you really want to do. But you find yourself still doing those things which you ought not to do. And that is why the Holy Spirit has ministered to us that this month we should be looking at the topic, the Holy Spirit. Man needs deliverance from sin and death. Last week I was mentioning, I said, the Bible talk about sins. That's the one with an S. But there was one that we dwelt on last week. The one that is without an S. Which is S-I-N. Another word for that is also flesh. Children of God, let me tell you something. If any child of God can overcome the flesh, he has overcome life. If you can overcome the flesh, then the devil's problem is just small. And that is why I'm singing that song. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Romans chapter 7. Standing in the need of him. Romans chapter 7 verse 15 to 25. Romans 7 15. And Paul an apostle. What I like the Bible is. The Bible is so real. That I can understand with what the Bible is saying. Other people may tell me that. Being righteous is too far. Is something that is too big. But the Bible has made me to break it down. He has broken it down to me. And I can empathize with that. I can relate with that. I can see myself. Apostle Paul, you all know in the Bible, was a man of great power. Was a man that the Holy Spirit used tremendously. And when I read the Bible and I read his own challenges with flesh and sin, I say, well, then I have a hope. Romans chapter 7 verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. What I hate, that do I. Apostle Paul was very clear, was very sincere with himself. 
He said, what exactly I don't want to do. In fact, what I hate is what I am doing. Maybe what you hate is just sinning. Oh, you are in the right place this evening. Apostle Paul too was like that. He says, what I hate is exactly what I find myself doing. Verse 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Verse 17. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin. Can you see the same thing that I was speaking of last week? It's not sins. There is no S there. But sin dwelleth in me. Let me ask this question. Let me see if somebody can even guess an answer. Why is man a sinner? Who can tell me? Why is man a sinner? Man doesn't sin, not because he just sin. Man is sins because he is born a sinner. Man does not just sin, just because he sin, he commits sins. Man is a sinner because he is born a sinner. He is born with the flesh. Let me ask this question. A lion is what? A lion is what? Even if you take a lion that has not seen other lions before, you take a kid lion, you grow him up, would he, still, would he become a goat? Answer now. A lion will always remain a lion. Man will always remain flesh. And if he remains flesh, he will always sin. Now, this evening we are not giving excuses for sin, but we need to lay the foundation of what the Bible calls sin. And hopefully this will propel us to have and cry out to God. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Romans chapter 7 verse 22 For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind bringing me to captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Romans chapter 7 verse 24 O wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from this body of this death? Don't forget last week we said the wages of sin is what? Death. Apostle Paul cried out. You know why I love the Bible? If it was somebody like Samson that said this, I would say, well, it's because Samson committed sin. If it is somebody like uh, other people in the Bible that were committing sin like Saul, and I read, and he's the one saying such a thing, I would say, oh, well, I always know him as a chronic liar. If it was even the psalmist that wrote this, I would be able to say, well, the psalmist, at least he has slept with somebody and killed somebody before. But this is Apostle Paul. He understood and said, Oh, I know that I am the chief of sinners. Romans chapter 7 verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thankfully, the story did not end at verse 24. Because if the story had ended at verse 24, many people would say, ah, after all, Apostle Paul is a sin was sinning. I thank God through Jesus our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh, the law of sin. Just to be clear, we need to say this categorically. Sin is sin. One of the reasons why you and I must not go to wellfire. The person that killed 10,000 people and the person that stole one goat, they will go to the same wellfire. So sin is sin. And no man can overcome sin without divine assistance. Now, the Bible is full of stories of men and women who sin destroyed. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of you. Samson could have been an all-time hero. Samson could have been an all-time hero. But sin brought him down. Judas was close to the Savior. When I think about those that sin destroyed, they were not only people that were far from God. Judas was close to Jesus. 
Judas drank with Jesus. Judas sat with Jesus. Judas, you know, did so many things with Jesus. But you know the story. He still died a sinner. I'm praying for you this evening. God will destroy sin in your life in Jesus' name. Ananias and Sapphira were one of the early converts in Christianity. They were one of those that started this Christian race. But a little flesh came in. Just a little lie. And that was why they died. Romans 6, chapter 12, verse 23. What does it say? Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. So when we ask this question, if sin is this bad, who then can be saved? Have you thought it to yourself? If sin is so bad, the way we say sin is bad, is bad, is bad, who then can be saved? This same question was a question they asked Jesus. Come with me with Matthew chapter 19 verse 24. Even the disciples asked Jesus. Even the disciples, they asked Jesus, Jesus Christ, this your standard is too high. Don't drink. Don't humanize. Don't shout. Don't lie. Don't falsify. Don't fornicate. It is too much. Are you with me? Matthew chapter 19 verse 24. He said, Dickin D, please open your Bible. And as you open your Bible, I want God to open your mind to see where we are going. Matthew chapter 19 verse 24. Again I say unto you, this is Jesus saying, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Of God. When his disciples had it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? If a rich man will not make heaven, if a poor man, heaven is not guaranteed for him, who then can be saved? It's me. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of you. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Jesus beheld them and said, With men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Anytime the devil comes to attack and you want to attack back, what will you say? With God, all things are possible. But do you know that the genesis of that story, the genesis of that word, did not come out of just we asking God for what we need. The reason why Jesus Christ said that is because he wants us to be perfect. Last week, Somebody asked the question that said, is it possible for a man to be perfect? And I answered, I said, that is not the right question. Because if it is the Bible, it is possible for man to be perfect. The right question is, how can man be perfect? The disciples asked Jesus Christ, is it possible that somebody will go and will not see? Jesus answered them, are you reading Matthew chapter 19 verse 26? It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing under need of prayer. Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. Can you see where we are ending now? With men, it is totally impossible to please God. But with God, all things are possible. The Holy Spirit can help you to overcome sin. Man has the tendency to sin and is born with this tendency. The psalmist cried out that he was born in sin. When we talk of the Holy Spirit, what often comes to our mind is the anointing and doing miracles. While this is true, the Holy Spirit's core work is to help free us from sin. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. If the spirit of God dwells in you. If the spirit of God dwells in pastor. If the spirit of God dwells in a brother. If the spirit of God dwells in a sister. What will happen? 
Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his own. If you see yourself falling into sin all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time, something is missing. The Holy Spirit is absent. But when the Holy Spirit comes in, it is guaranteed you cannot sin. Romans chapter 8 verse 10. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of the spirit. But the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of you. It's me. It's me. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 Mortify therefore your members which are upon the heads fornication, uncleanliness inordinate affection evil corpuses covetousness which is idolatry Colossians chapter 3 verse 3 For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience Sometimes when we talk about sin we try to rationalize it you know, something happened to in my office today. Some of the people that report under me, some interns. I just asked a question. And one of them lied. And the question was so simple. One of them was not around. And I said, have you called her? At least to know where she was. One of them just answered and said, I called. And I said, Raphael, why will you lie? Immediately, the Holy Spirit said he was lying. And I said, Raphael, why will you lie? And he was shocked. He said, how did I know that he lied? I said, the Holy Spirit just told me you lied. And I picked it on. I picked it. I picked up on him. I told him, I said, right around this office, I will not lie again. And he was trying to explain it. And I said, the reason why I'm angry with you was not that even you lied. The reason I was angry was you lied without even thinking. Do you know that's the highest form of lying? When they just wake you, 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 you are not thinking. You don't lie. Ha! Ah, I am fearful. At least, if I want to lie, I will try to exercise some energy. Let me plan it. But when somebody now lies without thinking, don't you think that it has got to another stage? Am I saying something, children of God? But let us be honest with ourselves. After I disciplined him, the only thing was now ministering to me said, Do you know that that is how we, even children of God, do? There are some things we do, we just do it so much, we are so used to it. We don't know that it, we know it is wrong, but we are now used to it, doing it wrong. We may laugh at Raphael, but I know that there are many Raphael seated here in church today. And if you don't know, I will tell you because that's why I'm singing. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of you. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of you. Don't stop. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? Let's round up. How can we receive the Holy Spirit? The Bible said, he that committed sin is of the devil. <laughs> but that's another topic for another day. How can we receive the Holy Spirit to help us to overcome sin? How can I receive the Holy Spirit to overcome sin? All believers must know that the Holy Spirit is first and foremost a promise from God. The Holy Spirit is a promise from God. And when you talk about God promising, God is not a man that will lie. God doesn't make empty promises. Let me tell you, pastor can make empty promise. 
Can pastor can make empty boasting? If I say God will bless you tomorrow, I still depend on God to bless you. But if God says, I will bless you tomorrow, you can go and sleep because the capacity to do it is with God. And when God now decides to promise something, hey, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Many of us are satisfied with God promising us great things. But the Holy Spirit of promise will come to you in the name of Jesus. In John chapter 3 verse 34, the Bible said, For he whom God has sent, speaketh the words of God, for giving for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. And when he was living, he made a solemn promise, which is still valid today. In John chapter 14, verse 16 to 19. He says, I will pray the Father. John chapter 14, verse 16. I will pray the Father. He will give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. <laughs> Do you know, recently the Holy Spirit was ministering to me. He says, the truth is different from facts. And the Holy Spirit started telling me, start speaking the truth. I'm telling you. Those who are start speaking the truth. What you are speaking is fact. It's not the truth. Fact is always backed by empirical evidence. Truth does not need evidence to validate it. Truth is truth. I will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So I ask God, how can I move from saying facts to the truth? And the Holy Spirit told me, I will be with you all the time. I will abide with you. John chapter 14 verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, he neither knoweth him. You know him, for he dwells with you, and shall be in you. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18. By two immutable immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. God cannot lie. When he says he make a promise, he will do it. So the next question we should ask is, how do I receive God's promise? To receive God's promise, let's look at some simple things we must do after we first recognize, like Paul, that we need God's help. If you are here, you have not taught it yet up until now that you need God, I am sorry, this message cannot profit you. If by now, you cannot think it deeply, that you cannot go a step further in the Christian race without God, then everything we have been saying since morning is more or less a waste. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of you It's me It's me It's me, oh Lord Standing in the need of you Not my mother, not my father But it's me, oh Lord Standing in the need of you Not the preacher, not the sinner But it's me, O Lord Standing in the need of you One simple way to receive the Holy Spirit Just believe And I'll tell us, John chapter 1 verse 12 but as many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. One of the reasons why I am rest assured I will make heaven is because I believe in Jesus. I don't care when the rapture will happen. I don't care how it happens. But I believe in Jesus. And because I believe in Jesus, it is enough. If you believe in God, you can receive the Holy Spirit. 
this is not just to believe that the Holy Spirit can give you money and anointing and can show you the husband to marry or the wife to marry. But the Holy Spirit can also tell you not to sin. Yes, the Holy Spirit can guide us and make us to choose a life partner. Yes, the Holy Spirit can guide us and we will not be duped or we will not be swindled or to get the right business, to choose the right career, to write, buy the right house, to buy the right thing. But the Holy Spirit can also help you to overcome sin. If you can believe that the Holy Spirit can, then he will. John chapter 1 verse 13. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And that's why I like the scriptures. <laughs> it's not of him that will it. It is not of him that run it. It is of the Lord. It is of the Lord. Number two, genuine repentance. On Sunday, by the, by the special grace of God, we are trusting God that there will be an impartation of the Holy Ghost for as many that will come out and receive it. But we need to state these clear steps so that when you start seeing the Holy Spirit touching people and it does not touch you, know that these are some of the reasons you have not fulfilled. Number one, you need to believe in God. Number two, is genuine repentance. I like the Yoruba word for genuine, for repentance. The Yoruba word for repentance means it is a concatenation of two words. It means thinking about it and turning back. Many of us only think about sin. We don't turn back. It's not us. It is the flesh. But if you recognize you need the Holy Spirit, what would you say? It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me. You. First John chapter 1, verse 9, because of time. If we confess our sin, if we confess our sin, one of the things that will make some Christians go to hellfire is because they don't confess their sin. If you are a child of God, never leave a sin hanging. Never leave a sin hanging. Once the Holy Spirit tells you that you have done something wrong, you may be walking on the road, you may be sitting in the toilet, you may be eating food. Confess it. Because there is a covenant of confession. John 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sin, if a man confesses his sin, if a pastor confesses his sin, if a sinner confesses his sin, he is faithful. God is faithful to and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can see it's a conditional statement. Let's tweet that word back. If we don't confess our sin, God is still faithful because God can never be unfaithful. And He is just. He will not forgive us our sin. He will not cleanse us from our righteousness. First John verse 10. If we say we have not sinned. If pastor says he has not sinned. Let me tell you. One of the reasons why I fear and I want to make evil. I know on the day of rapture, there are some people that will call my number. They won't say this big man pastor. Let's even be sure that he has gone. <laughs> but you know the good thing is <laughs> that day I'm with Jesus. I would have said, I am married to Jesus. I have gone with the rapture. I'm telling us. Acts chapter 3 verse 39. Repent you therefore. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent you therefore. Be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing, the times of refreshing is coming. The time of refreshing is coming for somebody. The times of refreshing will come. Where will it come? From the presence of the Lord. Let's look at the point number three as we round up five more minutes. Ask and test for the Holy Spirit. Ask and test for the Holy Spirit. How many of you have ever felt testy before? You come from the hot blazing sun and you get home and they give you pounded yam. They give you rice. What's the first thing you ask for? Chilled cold water. Test for the Holy Spirit. Ask that the Holy Spirit fills your life. It means to test for God. Unless all me. Me. 
Luke 11 verse 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Point number four. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in Jesus Christ. John chapter 7 verse 33. We started with believe. You see, is that's point number one. That's point number four. Believe in Jesus. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of, of living water. John chapter 7 verse 39. But this speak of he of the spirit, which they that believe on him shall receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. He spake of the spirit. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. Now that we know all these things that we have to do, <laughs> to overcome sin, we must walk in the spirit always. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. This I say, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. I just want you to ask for the Holy Spirit. Just say, Holy Spirit, I cannot help myself. If you are still thinking you can help yourself, this prayer is not for you. But if you know that you are like me, that needs God, I just want to give you one minute, just one minute to talk to God. Holy Spirit, fill my life. Holy Spirit, come into my life. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the middle.